Okay, guys. So, if you're like me and you have a brand new computer uh, and you want to install Windows 7, you may be running into issues. So, normally you would use the Windows 7 USB download tool. You choose your ISO, click next. And you'd select your no, your USB device, and then you choose which one you want it to be on, and you'd begin copying, and erase it, and say yes. And then it would go through, and it would format it, copy everything to your USB drive, and then you'd go to install Windows. So for me, I have a brand new AS Rock. Z370 motherboard and we want to install Windows 7 to dual boot, boot with Windows 10. So we already have Windows 10 installed but we want to be able to boot into Windows 7 in order to run certain programs that just will not work correctly under Windows 10. But if we try to do it the normal way, if we try to do it this way and then boot into the installation USB that it's creating rerun into an issue where it shows no keyboard and it shows no mouse. And we'll select our lovely USB and it'll load Windows. But you'll notice we have no keyboard support. So I can hit this all I want, nothing's there. No mouse mouse is shown. I can move the mouse all I want, nothing. So we've we can't do anything with this because we can't get it anywhere. And if you go online, there's a lot of things that say to go into your BIOS and change some settings. So, but if we go into our BIOS here, we can use our mouse as normal. And if we go to advanced mode and then start changing stuff, we can go into our USB and we can turn off this and we can turn on the simulator we can turn off the handoff and that's basically all the options we get so we either can turn on or off xhci and the simulator and legacy support and depending on where you go some people will say make sure it's disabled, some people say it should be enabled, and then we'll exit and save. But now we've lost all keyboard support, so now we can't use our keyboard. So doing that is not an option, because now we're booting straight into Windows 10, which we don't want. We wanted to get to Windows 7. Uh, so, you can't disable USB legacy support if you want to be able to get into the BIOS. So, don't do it. This shows exactly why, because we lost all keyboard support until Windows loads. So, we can get into the BIOS, couldn't select a bootable device, now we have to shut this down and reset the CMOS, which is simple. There's a button on the back of my motherboard that allows me to do it. So we have to go into the back here, hit a button to reset the settings because we disabled USB support, well, USB legacy support, and that's required in order to use a USB mouse. So, we are going to hit the button, re-enable it. So on the back here, we have a button that's right 
there. I don't know if you can see it, but that is a button. So we just hit it. You hit it once. The computer restarts itself immediately and it resets all of our settings to the default settings. And it tells us that the settings have been restored to default. So if we come back in here and we go back to our advanced or USB, this is reset to the default where legacy support is enabled. So we can actually get in here and the simulator is disabled. So if we leave the settings like this, we still can't get in a USB mouse to work with Windows 7. So if we enable PS2 simulator and save and exit, but we leave the XHCI handoff as disabled. We, we can now choose which device we want and we can see it works. Yay. So it works. So you have to have that specific setting in order for all this stuff to work. And now we can actually use our keyboard and our mouse and go between stuff. But we had to turn and we had to put the dongle and plugged it into a USB 2.0 port because Windows 7 doesn't like USB 3.0s without the drivers. So you don't have USB 2.0, so you have a new computer that's all USB 3.0, and you're like, oh my god, I can't use uh, a USB 2.0 port. It has to be USB 3.0. Uh, good news, ASRock does actually support installing Windows 7 uh, on your motherboard, even though Windows doesn't. Uh, and you can come to this site, so you can either search uh, ASRock install Windows 7, it's the first result, and then it will tell you exactly what you need. So you can come in here and select what you're installing on. So we are Intel, so we would click Intel. You can choose what you want to do. So you are most likely with a USB drive and any kind of mouse or keyboard. So you can come in here and you can be like, oh, okay, well, and you can follow all this stuff. So you will need to download whichever one of these you need. So we are Z370. So boom, we would download this and you can open it. And then this will give you a program that you can use to patch Windows installation so that it works with your Windows 7 or with your USB ports. So we could come in here, we can be like extract everything. And we can come in here and be like, okay, launch the patcher. And then you choose which one you want to do. So you can either do it with a USB drive to a CD or an ISO. We are going to create a USB because that is what we would be installing from. And then you choose uh, your Windows 7 installation, which could be a USB, a disk, a directory. For us, it would be an ISO. And then you would select your ISO here and then hit next. And it will uh, go through and ask you for where you want it to go. So for us, we would select uh, the USB drive that we have inserted. So you have to have the USB that you want it to uh, use for installing Windows, you have to have that inserted. You would select it and then you would hit start and it would go through, it would format the USB drive, it would get rid of whatever is on it. 
and then it'll start going through and patching the Windows files and then and then save them to your USB drive so that you can go ahead use that stick it in and your uh, USB will now be recognized and good to go with Windows 7 so if you run into an issue where it won't uh, work because you have USB 3.0 and Windows 7 doesn't recognize that then you can go ahead and go through the official ASRock site and go through here and get your drivers patched into the installation and you'll be good to go. And the issues don't stop there. So you'll see that when you get into Windows 7, when you finally have it installed, like we have here, that you won't be able to easily find the drivers. So if you download the app shop, which is usually where you find the BIOS, the drivers, everything you need for uh, things to run the only thing it will list is this Microsoft.net so even if you come in here and you're like okay update it and you say yes and you're like okay go for it when you come back in here the list will be empty there won't be it won't list anything so if we come in here and we're like yes after it does its thing, it will not actually have, it will not have a list of stuff once this is done. So we're going to go straight through their website. You find out that there actually is no support for Windows 7. There's no support for any device other than Windows 10. So if we come to their website, all drivers are listed as Windows 10 only. So it's like, oh, okay, well, that sucks. I don't have Windows 10. And then you're like, okay, well, where the just search Google. You'll find that you can't find the drivers easily. It'll take you quite a bit to find it. And there's only one result that will give you uh a list of drivers but then you're downloading sketchy drivers from people you don't know so in order to get the drivers you exist actually even though the official page does not want you to get them you can actually get them so in order to get the driver you have to go to the specification and then under here, it tells you what your uh, motherboard has as far as internet and everything you need in order to figure out what it is that you need. So the first thing you'll need is internet. So when you come to Windows, you'll find you don't have internet at all. Like your none of your network adapters will be recognized so in order to fix that if you have an updated phone like a samsung galaxy s8 or a phone that allows tethering you can do what i did and tether your phone via usb to your computer and that will uh give you a network adapter that works and then you can download all this stuff. So you have to search Google for this. You have to search Google for this in order to get your wireless and your LAN to work. And then you have internet, <laughs> regular internet. Uh, and then once you have that, you can go ahead and search for everything else that you need so you basically have to get all of this so I've already gone through and gotten all the drivers for my Windows 7 and if someone online says it can't be done 
uh, ignore them because when you get into Windows 7 you'll see this other section and it will be filled with uh, stuff that Windows doesn't recognize but once you get the drivers from third-party source you'll see all your problems go away so you can't get them from ASRock. ASRock will not give it to you. But you can search Google and get it through third party. Or directly from the manufacturer, I should say. Uh, so you can see all my networks on my Bluetooth, the LAN, the wireless, it's all installed and working. Uh, all my system devices are working so the chipsets, Intel management, the PCI, all that is working and it's because I had to go through and find all the drivers from the third party. When you got all your drivers installed and you're good to go, you think you're good to go, you'll run into another issue. The issues just don't stop people. So you'll go to Windows Update and you'll be installing because there's a ton of updates that need installed. Even if you have Service Pack 1 like I do, uh, you'll need to go to Windows Update and install a whole bunch of updates. But when you go to try and do that, you're going to run into an issue. So it'll give you about 100 updates out of the box where I believe it's like 108 important updates and then all of a sudden you will be halted and it's like well okay why am I being halted and you'll get this screen so you'll get this pop-up box that says you have unsupported hardware if you have a latest uh, CPU which if you have this motherboard you do have the latest CPU you will get this pop-up and it's very annoying and it basically says that your PC has new hardware and it's talking about your CPU and it's telling you that because you have a new CPU Windows has automatically blocked you blocked you flat out blocked you from getting updates because they don't want you to use a new CPU so new hardware on an old operating system. So it's basically Microsoft saying, F you, you are still on Windows 7 and we will only support Windows 10. So you'll get the first 108, then you'll get this update uh, that will install and it will update the updater and that adds a check for your hardware. And then it blocks any additional update attempts. So if you try to update, once you get this message, you'll get an error. So you will actually get an error that you can't scan and you can't install updates. Like you can't even scan for updates. So if you click the link that it gives you, you'll get this. And it takes you to the support page and it tells you basically the errors that you'll get. So you'll get this error if you try to search. And it basically tells you, screw you. You have an Intel 7th generation processor or later. And you are running either Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows Server 2012 or 2008. So you're basically running an old operating system. Uh, it does it for Vista uh, as well. So you're running an old operating system, but you're, and it will basically tell you <laughs> that you are required. They say recommend, but you are required to upgrade to Windows 10 or downgrade your CPU to an older version so that it doesn't hit this uh, check. But you can't really downgrade to an older version. You have to. So they're saying you have to upgrade to Windows 10 because that's all they're going to support. Now, quite a bit of important updates that were released after this check was implemented that you're going to want. So you have to remove this. And the good news is there is a way to get around this pop-up. There's two ways. There's the easy way and then there's the annoying way. So I took the easy way, 
you can do the annoying the annoying way. So the annoying way is if you come to this URL, it actually explains it. So it will tell you that this update specifically is what implemented the check. So if you want, you can go through your Windows update history, find this update, and then uninstall it and hide it so it doesn't come back. Uh, or you can turn off Windows update automatic so that it uh, doesn't update unless you want it to update. Uh, but to me, that's annoying. <laughs> I don't want to have to go through that. I just want to get rid of this the fastest way possible that leaves my updates still turned on. And the good news is that there is a way to do it. So the easiest way to do it is to actually search for the error. So Windows unsupported hardware. And one of the first results is how to get rid of that message. And the easiest way to do it is this, is to download W, <laughs> uh, U, -U which I assume is standing for Windows Update FU. So if you look, go to this, it takes you to GitHub, uh, which if you don't know what GitHub is, it is for developers to up, uh, to keep track of their code. So I use this all the time because I'm a developer. So it's basically when you're creating a program, you upload your code to GitHub and it basically keeps track of all the code. So it keeps a history of everything. So that if you need, if you lose it or you need to go back to a previous version or something, you just go to GitHub and download your code. So it'll take you to the project that someone created and you can come in here and download the latest stable build. Uh, so if you come in here and you download this, you'll get doo -doo 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 -doo, this. So depending on which version of seven you have, we have ultimate and 64 bit. So we would download this, but if you have 86, you can download this version and you would come in here and you'd be like, okay, save the file. And then that downloads an installer. So once this downloads, you would come in here and you would open up this and you'd be like, okay, I don't care, run it. And then you'll get this nice little setup. So you just go through the setup, it'll install what it uh, wants. And what this is doing, since I already have it installed, I'm not gonna install it. Uh, what this is doing is implementing a workaround that bypasses that hardware check. Cause you don't really need it, it's just annoying. So once you install that, and then we go to Windows Update, you'll see all of a sudden that message goes away and you can once again, download your updates. So after I installed that and tested it before making this video, uh, there were 80 updates that I had to install. So if we check my update history, there 80 of these were all installed today. So it's like, okay, so we went through and we installed like 80 updates. And if we come through, we can hit check for updates. And this is where it would have failed before. And now instead of failing, we'll see it actually gives us a result. Boom, just like that, 
we have a result and we did not get an error and we can come through and we can be like okay what updates do we have and we can see that we are getting the latest updates like this was published in 2019 so this year and we can get through and we can get the latest updates and we can install them without getting that annoying pop-up so if you tried to do this before you would get that pop-up it would halt you it would give you an error it would tell you you can't do it so so that's all it takes so once you do that you will have everything you will have updates you will have drivers and you will have windows 7 installed perfectly working uh with everything you need and i will just to make everyone's life easier i will upload i will zip the drivers and upload them to google drive and put the link below in the description so that all you have to do is come in and download this and i will while this is updating we will do this now and i will explain this so we will oh if we can spell right So you're going to need the Bluetooth driver. Okay, it can move it if it wants. You are going to need the chipset driver. So Intel Management Studio or Interface, you're going to need that in order to get it. But see inside of here, they for some reason, they give you all these folders, but you need to go into Consumer. And then it'll give you these options and we don't want that we want the top option and then there's a setup me that's what you want to run so consumer then the first option because you are not a corporate unless you are a corporate then you can install that you are going to need the land drivers so there the LAN is Intel, so they are Intel LAN drivers. So you can go through and do that. You are gonna need the USB drivers, but you are not gonna need this one, so I will remove this one. This one is specifically for my USB drivers that I bought external but the ones that come on the motherboard are AS media so you're gonna need to run this setup oh and our updates installed which one failed because whatever this is and the next one it can't do it while this is running so of course you can't do that uh, so I'm assuming it's yelling at me because I need to restart my computer for it to actually finish the update. So you're going to need the wireless, which is Intel. <laughs> uh, so you're going to need that. And then I'll put this in here just in case you do have a Western Digital external hard drive because you will you don't really need them but if you don't want to see the unsupported or other uh, thing listed under device manager you can install this and it'll get rid of it and then the update unblocker is that WUFUC you need to install that which is the same exact thing we went and downloaded from github and then that's about it so once you have all of that all this installed you will be perfectly fine to just go ahead and use your uh, normal windows update and get everything ready for your computer and that is it so hopefully this saves someone a lot of time uh fighting to figure out what to do if you uh, like this video, give it a thumbs up, 
and if you want me to make any more videos on how to get something to work, leave a comment and let me know. And one last thing, if you have something in here and you're it's outside, like you installed something on your computer or your computer has uh, extra devices that aren't covered by the regular drivers and you have other things down here that are unknown and you want to know what it is, you want to be able to get the drivers for it. Uh, the simplest way is to actually click on the device. So, for example, for me, <clears throat> those USB drivers <clears throat> that were extra is because I have a via USB. <clears throat> so, it this showed up as unknown, even after I installed all the motherboard drivers. So, the easiest way to figure out what drivers you need is to click on it, go to details, and then hardware IDs. Click on this, copy the hardware ID, and then search Google for that hardware ID. So if we search for this hardware ID, <coughs> It tells us exactly what it is. It is a via USB hub and it gives you uh, the drivers. So you can instantly find out pretty much what the uh, device is and figure out what uh, drivers you need. There's unknown devices. You can figure out what they are without knowing what it's actually talking about. So go ahead and do that if you have unknowns after installing the regular drivers and then you'll be good to go.